Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Um, yeah. Welcome to another podcast. Um, I've just been uh, noticing that my I've been ramping up the amount of uh, podcasts that I've been doing by doing it in the evening as well as in the morning. Um, and I was I was fearing that I was getting a, a, I might have um, got to a stage where I would run out of ideas and um, uh, I wouldn't have any sort of good material to share with you. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I have this little um, this little notebook which I'm just always just filling in little ideas every once in a while which pops into my mind i've i've got a lot of old ideas that have just been floating around with me for some time and um that's sort of come in handy just to as a little a little uh well, nice use of uh, content for the future um but i've also been reading about in the podcasts with regards to um how you should be delivering your content on a weekly basis getting some nicely rounded um concise factual um information where you can um just Extract that. It's a nice little package, thirty-minute um, podcast where I just go wham, bam, boom. Here's all the information fired to you in that spec second. And as as good as that would be, that probably would take me about a billion times longer than what I'm doing currently. Um, and uh, hopefully one day in the future um, we can get somebody to just cut out all the ums and ahs and pauses and the podcast will probably be about 20 minutes anyway so um, that's all to look forward to where are we going today right um, I seem to uh, wake up in the, po- uh, in the morning and I just have this little thought that fires into the mind and just that on that thought alone, I just remembered um, with my podcast yesterday about how uh, with the spiritualists, they do have this little um, thing called fate driving a lot of their things. And there's this sort of secret um, spiritual hand which provides you with pieces of information at different points in your life and different connections and just so happens that you are thinking about the other person at the same time and all of a sudden hey presto that thing materializes and um, it's the power of the mind and the mind and some otherworldly alien which is trying to help you out Um, that's again falls into the category of a little bit dangerous because it removes it it doesn't empower you it it removes you to ha- ha- take things into your own hands and be responsible for your own actions be um conscious of where your life's going and how it's going to uh, happen and more and rather than you just being in this sort of Oh, I'm in a state of free flow. Let's see how this goes. Um, uh, the God above is going to, or the, the spiritual uh, alien is going to send me a few messages soon. And um, this message is going to happen. And all of a sudden, my life's going to change. Um, I might be getting into my 60s now, but I still think this message is going to happen. And the world's going to change. And we're all going to, um, the aliens are going to land. And we're all going to be dancing around in. Um, little, little skirts and we're all going to be happy forevermore um, it's it's not really the, the case um, 
<laughs> if, if it was if it was the case, then um, you wouldn't necessarily have the, the well just for, just from the uh, an em empirical sense. The ones that are guided, the ones that are the ones that are, feel that all the responsibility is in their hands to be a success of themselves usually strive a lot better to be a success you find than the ones that think that their lives are being guided by some kind of spiritual alien um it it just makes sense in that in that realm because you know that nobody if once you know that nobody's going to come out there and give you this sacred message um and that sacred message is going to save the world and you're going to be the one that that changes everything once you realize that that's not the case then you know that everything's back in your hands the responsibility and all the action is back on you and as much as that doesn't fill you with so much sense of wonder and makes you feel pretty pretty average it is the best thing for you if you could think of yourself of taking a certain kind of medicine the best kind of medicine was would be the one that brings you back to your own reality of your own world of your own senses where you have the ability to um, construct things with your own hands and not let the fate be in some twisted turn of circumstances where you need to where something is handed to you um so what was the thoughts that shot into my mind this morning um tools um interesting little subject tools um there's the there's a lot of um material on this one this subject matter because um the application of a tool and the the word in itself can be used for multiple means um which i will divulge and um hopefully you're getting some little ideas at the same time while i'm doing this and if you get any extra ideas you um, please add comments and um, anything else because it's uh, um, and ideas because this is a two-way street and um, even though I say this is an exercise of my philosophic mind um, I hope this is um, we're sort of uh, gym buddies um in this in this realm and um i'm pushing you as much as you pushing uh myself so um if you've got if you can spread any ideas and particularly where, where i come from with tools i just want to sort of um i don't want to just make it very basic as a oh uh, a drill is a tool i want to make it sort of how how vast we can perceive how tools are and how they can be used and how they can be um and and put the moral sense into into the into the tool and how it, how it can be constructed and then then you get some a lot of edginess in um the uh episode so going back to definitions as um, we usually do on on a subject matter so it, you you usually find you read something on the on the lines that it's like some kind of implement um that you you put in your hand um the hammer obviously springs straight in there um and you can you can do something mechanical with it so you you you, you operate something mechanically but that that's how you would um, construct that straight away but there's it's not really the, you, you're really isolating a task which doesn't doesn't uh, give us a great explanation of the term and how it really is applied to every realm of 
our lives. Um, so there is the uh, the physical tool, the tool which is the hammer, the mechanical thing, the tangible physical item which you pick up in your hand. Um, everyone's quite aware of um, how, what you can mention as a tool. Um, then you have the the virtual tool, which is like you're opening up an application. You have got a number of tools. Um, uh, incidentally, last night I found this amazing thing where um, well, I, I do a little bit of um, coding and and stuff like that. Nothing too fancy, but I was just trying to find an easy way to where I could run a script um, to do my voice processing because. Um, when I start off with my voice, it's just this tiny little um, little sound wave file, and then it, um, I need to do a number of things with uh, improving the voice, so I sound like some crazy ass um, radio presenter. Um, but there's this like little, there's this, a number of little processes which I do um, where I have to expand it onto um, two channels so it sounds in st so you've got noise coming in your both ears you've got um, what's that you've got to uh, you've got to rem remove the noise which occurs because I'm driving in a car all the time so that gets um, minimized especially in the silent moments so it just detects the the, the size of the wave so uh, file at that point um, then there is uh, so that's just general noise. Then there's this, um, just like the, the gap of like silent noise. It just removes anything where there's just a space of no vo uh, volume at all. And then just wipes that out to to a minimised sense. Um, then there's um, a uh, graphic equaliser where I just try and enhance the sound of my voice. And the voice is vo your voice is generally a little uh, a very high sort of sense of range. Then there's n not a lot happening in the mids. In fact, the mids just muffle your voice a little bit, and then you just boost it with a bit of bass, and that just gives that nice sort of radio presenter sound. Then um, there's an act of compression where where basically the wave file is com compressed and expanded into the the voice uh, into the wave band where you. Um, you're you're maximising for every um, time that I talk. It just gets ex gets extended into the um, the confinements of how much sound I can generate in that in that space of time. And then there's one more um, EQ which I do afterwards again, where I just sort of round off the sound. So I just again I try and cut off that little. S at the end but I, I still am trying to work on that at the moment and um, so I just try and cut off the uh, the high ends and then I um, cut off the, the the lowest of the low um, base points where um, you can just get this massive muffling of, of your base if, especially if you've got some um, uh, well just any sort of speakers it'll just kick into the speakers and it'll just destruct them as well so I just do that with my um, sound I've got a, a good little uh, headset as well, um, which, um, you know, one of those sort of um, stage performance sort of, uh, or these gym little uh, hem headsets, which isolates your voice. And it seems to work pretty impeccably. Um, so I'm, I'm very impressed with um, today's technology. Um, but the point that I was getting at on my little tangent was... Um, they're, they're all different individual little tools in a collection of tools and I was trying to get a little script, to a command script to say right once you do this bit you've got to do this bit then you've got to do this bit and um, I've, I've, in each one of those tools I've laid out certain settings which I require and uh, at first I was just clicking on, on onto exactly which parts did what um, but I wanted something to run in an order of just automation and then saving down the files and everything else and um, Oh yeah, you've got to save down the file, and you've got to just um, you got, you're trying to create a high quality conversion into MP3, and um, then you've got to try and uh, in, introduce like tags to the MP3. It's a little 
fantastical amount of little things. But then, um, so I want to just create the maximum amount of efficiency in the processing that I do. And if I have a, like a, a number of um, podcasts as well, I can just run them in a in this batch. And there was this, this batch converter. It's all on um, SoundForge. Um, definitely recommend it. Um, and hey, presto, it's just like, um, I had, uh, it just ran through uh, all of the tasks in a batch form of just doing all my process steps without the slowness of me clicking around and being, taking my time navigating through all the top menus and everything. And it just smashed it out. I could multitask, I could do other things while I, I was watching um, all of those files be created. Um, and then you can obviously, if you, if at different stages of the uh, production part you want to just enhance things or anything, you've got this this amazing um, tool which can enhance uh, the capabilities of things. So um, for me, tools are are amazing things. They, um, especially when you can use them for means to improve and make things more efficient for yourself. Um, and <clears throat> when when tools are created to for a purpose which are which are good, then you have a number of wondrous things that occur. But so, also, I just wanted to mention that <clears throat> tools are not just confined to us humans. Um, you do get. Um, different types of um, ape or chimpanzee which can use sticks um, to like get ants out of little farms and you can see those all on wildlife um, thing, uh, channels and <coughs> they use stones to crack nuts um, so you from a perspective of using tools um, and a survival sense and improving the standards of our own being it's not isolated to just the um the humans who have met ma well we're the ones who mastered the tools we know how to <coughs> control the tools and and we've pushed the the tools to such a, a great degree um that no way does anybody know the the amount of tools that are out there and what they can do and um you'll be surprised that there are so many tools out there that can improve your life that you just do not even have a single clue about them in the first place. And um, a lot of the tools now are, are made on a, on a virtual level, which um, greatly improves um, things. And uh, one of the one of the top subjects I want to go through at, at some stage is the uh, the Internet of Things, which. Um, will cover these um which will give us a little bit more of like future ideas i want to go in i definitely want to go into like how um predictions of the future and, and how we can craft ideas um and how we how how things can go on in the future as a, as a bit more i want to be a bit more of um I want to put forward more theories on the future, even though um, I guess I'm not being a purist philosopher at that point. I'm just literally trying. Well, I'm trying to put forward theories. I'm, I'm, at least I'm being a. Um, I'm trying to make true statements. I'm not saying that this is the way it's going to be, but I'm. I'm I, I would like to offer some help in that that realm of thought, just so that. Mankind can kick off a little bit further. We can just push forward ideas. I had been always one of those people that I thought. I remember when I was a kid and I was thinking about the. Um, definitely remember this one thing. Like, I, well, I'm, I'm sure most kids thought about this themselves as well. It's where you um, have two little boards of uh, magnets and then you go, oh my God, I've got pos um, two opposites, um, uh, two ne uh, magnets. Um, uh, not positive and negative, but, but um, the same sides, and they create this like hovering, this hoverboard thing. I was going, oh my god, we can use this! And um, I was saying, imagine, imagine if you could use this on, on a on a train, and uh, at each step you get um, one magnet switching the side, so it pulls the the 
the train up further as it as it go, glides through and stuff like that. And obviously, that's a little bit of the basis of how you get these um, super fast um, bullet trains. <coughs> So the mind does work in that in that sense, and as soon as you just like start shooting through the, all the connections of how that can be applied, it's it's really interesting in that respect. Um, let's get back to the subject matter. Um, now, tools. One one thing. Let's get the the moral side of things going now. with tools so the apes going around he's cracking some nuts he's getting some ants out of the <clears throat> out of whatever nest they're, they're in or um, little mounds that they're in <coughs> sorry my throat's killing me um and then uh, all of a sudden We've got the riches of these tools. We've got a little bit more in the way of food. There is abundance around, which is fantastic. And that just sends us all in a reproduction overdrive. Um, so everyone's happy. Um, so we got that 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 little um enjoyment period going on but we live in the constraints of our own environment and then we find that with these tools we've um we have stretched the resources in our location or in our environment so that the there is scarcity around and then, then this is the market forces kicking in um so now that there's scarcity and um the potentially the tools which we used i mean I, I guess this is like this is just a very basic term of what a tool can do at first and um we need to just enhance that tool after that point this is like we need we need to get to the next step um of sustainability i'm, I'm sounding like a, a zeitgeist person at the moment <laughs> maybe i'm falling into the trap um so so these tools um are uh, creating scarcity for us now, so we've we've got ourselves into this point where we're going. Okay, we're running, we're running out of um, these ants. These ants have had enough now. They've they've packed up and they're, they're moving somewhere else, or they've the, we've just exhausted all the ants um, there, or um, we've run out of nuts. Everyone's everyone's smashed all the nuts now. There's so many of us that the, the nuts don't really last us too long. We got a couple of options at that point. We can migrate to a different area, which obviously. Humans have just literally just covered the um, the earth like a giant moss, um, but a rapid one on steroids. Or, um, well, the, the, there's the there's the third solution, but I'll just mention the um, the next one that we will come to, and this is the next logical step, is that as we've got, um. As I'm smashing this nut on the ground and I'm cracking it open, somebody's coming over to me and taking my nut away from me. And these nuts are in a bit of a short supply. What am I going to do now? So, as I'm smashing this nut, I'm thinking to myself, I'll tell you what. If he comes over and takes my nut again, I will provide justice for this. And all of a sudden, the tool for the good um, can be used as a weapon. Um, but the, 
but without the sense of morality and all of those things and obviously if you don't have the ability to communicate as to um, what is just and and things like that um, you've got the mob kicking in uh, factor at that point so you've got tool, plenty of tools and not much morality and that's where rather than a a nutshell gets uh, cracked you actually get a skull that gets cracked so very <clears throat> um interesting at this point um so you create a massacre and um one thing that's fascinating with tools if you uh, if you just look at um just look at the the period just um from the at the start of the uh, first world war to the end of the uh, second world war how rapidly um weaponry can sort of um improve once people were just guided into massacring and um their opponent it's unbelievable you're just like ah oh, right we're just gonna um, call to arms um so from from once having just this little um handheld um stone we build it up we um we create a, a much larger one we put an axe element into them and this tool technology um can end up being appli applicable to back in return um for good means which is very interesting like say gps was a military tool and now it's re uh returned back to us as um satellite navigation and us getting around and um uh what's the bloody i can't even think of what the um what's the dating application that people use um, for some reason, I don't know what it is, why it's on the mind. I can only think of the the uh, the gay one, um, Grinder. But yeah, you use Grinder. Let's go with it. Um, there's um, there's all those uh, applications that we can all start to use now from the technology of um, uh, tools which were used for evil means, um, which is just an an interesting. Um, perspective to take eight even at that point but this arms race uh kicks in and <clears throat> generally uh, even though there are certain fruits that you can extract from the uh, the arms race these tools um like this this bigger nutcracker can be turned into other things it can t uh, be turned into an axe now which can chop chop down trees and you can get the the fruits from a higher area you can start getting uh woods to to um to keep yourself warm during the cold um, winters so people so the old people don't freeze over um and then you keep the knowledge for a bit further so the <coughs> the tool element is incredible like so fascinating um and yeah, so I just I just touched upon certain tools, um, but then there's there's got to be the well the, the the best the ones that here we go still keeping on tight guys the ones that um, the the real masters of the tools are the ones that can use them in a sustainable fashion. So the ones which um, the ones that start to use farming and um, are able to provide um, uh, to get what well, sow seeds and create a certain amount of grains and live within the means of uh, what they can produce or they can expand beyond what they can produce and then they use that expansion of um, what they can produce as a value that they can exchange with other people um, and say we have we have like a, a monetary system that where we can exchange goods and services for value fantastic things emerge 
Then we have the constructs of um, minor cities, but in the in the background there is the war element. So yeah, so that's that's the third channel of the tool. Once, um, so firstly, it's just it's you, you've got your nutcracker, you've got your stick to extract your your uh, your ants and all those items, but then I think you might you you generally would have the weaponry element and then you have the tool which makes things a little bit more sustainable for everybody. Oh my gosh. Um, next up. Just... um. Don't you hate it when you're stuck at an intersection and your the traffic was like moving rapidly, and then all of a sudden you're st stuck right and blocking off everybody. Ah, oh, frustration of these tools. Um, now we get we get into an interesting um area, which is which never really sort of gets thought about too much. Um. Words. Words are um, a method or an operation <coughs> of the mind which um, has a me mechanical process um, and it enables us to transfer over ideas and value, which I hope I give you a tiny grain of, of something at some point in time at one podcast, um, is, is a method of, um, of a tool. Yeah, and, and words are probably the most powerful tool that we have ever constructed. If you think of the sense that once we have the ability to master communication with each other, <clears throat> um, that is when um, we have the, the greatest ability for hunting, we have the greatest ability for self-organization, we have the greatest ability for the betterment of humankind, and the destruction of humankind as well. So this is where we go into the dogma, the, the control of one's mind, where I can use words to manipulate you and um, make you all send gold bars to me tomorrow morning, which isn't going to happen. Um, but yeah. The greatest um, tool of all time is the word, the spoken word. Um, more powerful than the sword, the gun, the, the nuclear bomb. Um, <clears throat> I always think of it, if you, if you could say the right words to, say when you, when you were younger, if you could say the right words to the, to the, to the most prettiest girl, um, everything worked out perfectly, then that girl would be yours. If you could work out the measure of how you could uh, mention those words then you could construct it i guess obviously there's a lot of things of how you portray yourself how you stance what's um uh, the way you speak as well but which are all elements of different tools that you can use with people um there's, a, there's multi variations of the tool there but um you you could achieve anything at that point which obviously for a young male that's probably their, their number one target but um you you have that and um these words are is is basically where every all media streams sort of uh kick in so in the realms of words these words these tools um are not only spoken for for our voice but we've worked out a way to convert these tools into um, a format of writing which can be pressed against papers um, <coughs> and put onto computer screens 
So, uh, well, in the in the old style, that meant meant that we had the ability to transfer so something physical without moving the actual person itself or passing from word to, uh, from one word to another, um, one one word of mouth to the other. Um, a method of transferring this information and the methodology of doing that is the the tool, the construct. So the book would have been a, a fantastic tool to. <clears throat> transfer over information for either good means or bad means. Now, in the realms of um, of words, you, you've got to be very interested in 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 the in the art of words. Um, Confucius said um, in the beginning of philosophy, um, you must use the correct words for the for the correct things. So I I. I probably stuffed that term but it's basically like things like imprisonment is um caging somebody up and a soldier is a trained killer of the state things like that just just uh d different elements of um how the how words can be constructed and used and um, the format of which they can u be used, and you can tap into people's emotions um, very easily. Um, if you think of, <coughs> I can, oh, I don't know if I can, I can do this, but imagine like, um, imagine those video ho horrific videos you get where you see this crying baby seal on this ice patch with blood surrounding it, and then this man chopping this axe directly into it and it yelps out screams when it smashes into it and this blood splatters and and you can see the tears dropping in its eyes as it slowly perishes and stuff like that you can i can try and pull a little bit of emotion from you at that point just by the mere construct of my words which are firing through the internet right now and well have just been downloaded and uh been retorted back to you and then you've processed that through your ear canal which has got this little uh, drum uh, machine and it processes into your brain so all of those tools can instruct and fire into an emotion of yours um, which I can start manipulating so you've um, got an, an immense power and once once people realise where the power lies of the instructor of the words, the most important tool, one of the most important tools um, in our society, you um, you you will find the the greatest investment. So, particularly just from a free market sense, because obviously, if you, if you want to try and sell your um your brand of um fruit juice you you want to just um you want to say that your fruit juice is delicious and thirst quenching and golden and the sun reflects off and the beads of um beautiful uh, uh condensation from outside of the glass of this lovely orange um, juice is so special, and ah, oh, it's just once you taste it, you you're in you're in heaven. Like just a, a, an advertiser just loves the uh, the median of um, of words. Um, words is um, yeah. So the, the, the median of like say something like um, uh, when you're in a cinema, you you are fully immersed into that world where your visual and your um so your your eyes and your ears are sort of essentially immersed into this sort of a uh, realm um <clears throat> but sometimes i think like uh you want, once you have that the, the full immersion of um your eyes and your ears there's a there's an element of focus which like the, i think you do have the brain's capacity to compute and process all of these items at the same time can be um, overwhelmed at, <coughs> at times and it just it, it's more of an emotional trigger in you sometimes whereas I think uh, 
the more intellectual and the focus of things is is more so where you can focus on reading a book or you can focus on hearing some somebody's voice where the the power of um that transfer well the, the medium of the of the tool um really hits you so this is where um <clears throat> The media loves this tool. So the media has multiple tools um, in this area. <coughs> they 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 used to have the, the the broadsheet papers, and that that paper was a fantastic mechanism for them to pass down their information. Now you might have um, usually you have some kind of certain party political backed um, paper for this tool and this tool um would either be the the voice of the the newspaper man and that newspaper man would fund the government and would say that this is um this is the things that we want this is the country that we're looking for maybe it was a good thing maybe it was a bad thing but obviously when you've got the um the element of power and you've got the power over the words that's when the uh, the tool becomes dangerous um and um, it it is the the most disguised tool is with the tool which you can use to manipulate others with. Um, I always like going like to those little amusement um, areas where you've got the different mirrors and um, it got the illusion of the mind and you can see different things from staring at a pattern on the wall. <clears throat> it it definitely sort of shows you how your senses can be. Um, well, not play tricks with your mind, and they de they definitely give you a, a bit more of a um, a bit more of a message than what you think it is, rather than just a bit of a laugh seeing your your face go fat or something like that. But um, yeah, and this is this is something area where like people take drugs as well. That that sort of gives them, especially when they take hallucinogens, they 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 see a different perspective of themselves and from what the channel of their mind is thinking in the, in the in the first place so yeah certain tools have been hijacked and tools can be used to manipulate you so the the, the greatest tools are the ones that can extract wealth out of you without you really necessarily causing too much of a fuss anymore uh, 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 at all really and certain tools can be processed into you for certain periods of time where it can have an effect on society itself and swing opinion so that eventually this these tools um, do not have to work anymore and the tools have done their job and they're embedded into the minds of people anyway um, so a tool can have a very long pronounced sort of uh, effect once they have been created um, <coughs> and yeah ever, ever, ever since the uh, um, the age of media and the uh, the age of like the Bible which got sent out but it was written in Latin people um, want to manipulate the tool and not get like the tool to, to uh, one interesting element of a tool is people want to use the tool to the to as much of their ability, but not for you as much. So that's always an interesting element in the sense of um, of tools is uh, people don't like to share, especially when it has a greater effect on uh, their lives and it has a, and and it diminishes others. Um, even though if if you do share the tool then it, it, it is for the betterment of everybody else um people th think okay once i've got this tool once i've got this channel i don't want to um share this so say if you had a newspaper you wouldn't have you wouldn't have a right wing reporter and you wouldn't have a left wing reporter on the same newspaper just bringing out two opposed articles of um of what the opinion would be, even though that would be a, a fantastic, interesting, well-balanced um, news article. 
um, it'd be lovely if you just had like two different columns and one one was fighting against the other, and you had like a number of um, arguments and rebuttals, and then you could determine what the actual um, the truth was between the two of those. Um, that would be fantastic. Um, but yeah, no, you you wouldn't get that. You, um, once you once you're in control of this tool, you want to um, send out a certain message. You want to restrict certain um, other other people from using that tool, which um, could uh, go against um, what you want to create. <clears throat> so you you create mechanisms to prevent people from um, using this tool. So you make it so vast and complicated, so that for for some nobody from nowhere to set up their own um, newspaper, it would be just just too much work, too much effort. Paper's too expensive. Um, where are you going to get your advertisement funding from? All of those things, and it's just. Um, you can you can think of where it's it's just this um this great barrier to entry in that in that realm, and then you then you've got um uh you can put forward copyrights for using certain technologies and, and so where would you start with all, all of these constructs of of the tool? So um interesting. Interesting uh, theories, just um, putting th well theories. Well, I think there is some grounded truth behind most of what I say there. But uh, I always say that if um if if you ever get this ah the pennies dropped um feeling, then I think I'm I'm onto something. But always um don't take what I say as the truth. Just just um, take it off on board and then just um, process it in your mind and just um, smash it to smithereens with a load of deduction and questioning and synergies and everything else. Um, just just so I'm not creating some weird little faction which um, has this little fanciful idea of how the world runs. Um, because I am using a tool on you right now. so. Um, I hope this tool is being used as uh, for a, gr a good means rather than just a, um, a destructive means. Um, um, so yeah, so the so the element of sharing this tool, this is this is a, a really sort of a, a good part of um, this episode where you, where we we basically just sort of think to ourselves that. This this nutcracker is fantastic, and everyone wants to, um, to have. To use this nutcracker, and then, then we start to show our children how to use these tools, and we show, um, and that that gets passed on throughout time. Um, an interesting, um, oh, there was a couple of things I was just thinking about at the same time, and then they just disappeared from my mind. Um, the yeah, let's still carry on with this. Um, so, with the um, the sharing of tools, um, we can better the world. We don't want to do it at first. We just think, okay, well, I've got I've got this thing uh, wrapped up and um, and it's improving my life. I'm going to keep this tool to the day I die, and then hey, presto, I die, and that that tool is just um, destructed with my myself, and never does humankind ever benefit from anything that of what I have done. And hey, presto, what 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 have on your deathbeds this tool that you've used? You've used it um, for your only your only selfish means. And you haven't shared it, and you haven't you haven't um, given it out, and you you want to be this miser which um, protects his tool and says <coughs> um, this can no longer be used. So, um, when you're in the ideas um, forum, I always think there's um, so I I I don't think that um, copywriting and patents is 
especially from being the, the technologist ideal um, from when I was in the past, I always thought that the, the biggest hindrance of us was um, just the um, the uh, the constructs of like copywriting and um, pa patents and you get all these, as soon as you construct a, a new idea, the patents um, people come over and send you their lawyers, which uh, have got, uh, they've got this massive machine which um, which destroy you in seconds and then you, you've got to, fight your case and you, you don't you've got to read through all these like massive books which just um, which have been translated into a different tool language so that only these um these certain um lawyers can understand this tools and like it's, it's just a it's just a horrible sort of um nasty thing and it just cages up the idea of how we can pass on tools and and once I, I pass on one tool, so hopefully if I pass on one idea, <coughs> I hope that as, as, as I've heard ideas fr um, uh, forwarded to me, I hope that as I could add something to that idea and a different angle and a different perspective and push something, something forward, I can pass an idea to you and then you can forward me back an idea back and then we can bounce these things between each other and construct amazing things and i think this is um this is the greatest um method of um producing fantastic tools for the betterment of mankind um <clears throat> let's um segue into something else now so Just going back to the to the basic tools again. Um, in a, in a definition sense, um, so tools really should be making something a bit more efficient or uh, be creating something of better quality, um, producing something better. And when we think of ourselves we think of ourselves as um we're, we're using a certain amount of energy at all times and this energy is um is is definitely limited there's a, only a certain amount of um of kfc in the world and we use this tool to limit the amount of energy which is being used. Um, now, obviously, we've got the sun sitting up in the sky, and that has just got a ridiculous amount of power which we haven't been able to harness in any uh, fantastical sense. So... we um just just think of it in that in that sense as well we we you always hear all the term of um the labor saving device <clears throat> it's they're all devices to save us on energy in in that respect and to save us on time which is our greatest resource um, so if you look at the spectrum of that, we want to, at every stage of our lives, we create a new tool and once we get to this, um, better point of, um, better tools, we, um, We have capacity to do um, better and, and new things. Um, we can be more creative. We can be uh, we can be more social. We have more abundance, and we can pursue happiness and be morally good. Um, so once these tools are um, enhanced over time and improved we have um excess capacity and you, you've got to think to yourself in 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 those terms um where does it lead us because 
the construction of more and more tools over time, where is that going to where where is that going to put us? Does that does that do these tools enable us to fly off this earth? Does this tool enable us to create this cybernetic being which can live forever? Or does this tool um or the most dangerous tool is obviously the one that um uh ends with the demise of our uh us as a species, which um everyone looks at the nuclear bomb. However, the um interesting thing about the nuclear bomb is that it's actually uh saved us from a lot of um destructive uh things. So so which is uh it's always an interesting perspective to take. Um, so as tools progress, I hope that we have a world where we pass on information freely and we, even though once you master something and you think, ha ha ha, this, um, this fantastic tool is great for me, I can make this beautiful amount of money and I'm going to hide this away and stuff like that. I think sometimes the, the, the greatest good that you can provide is um sharing this information and and keeping this to other people because once you once you have the information of how the tool is constructed and how the tool is used um you have a, a certain element of power over people and once you have the power then you um you are fairly res you have to be fairly responsible at that point and a lot of people do not have the the um, the ability to handle the power in any sort of constructive way. A lot of people just um, cannot handle the power, gets to their head, and hey presto. You have a very dangerous world. Now I'm stuck in a incredible traffic jam. So I need to find a way out of here. Do you think I'm going to go through there? I think I'm going to have to do some uh, dodgy driving. When I say dodgy driving, I just need to get down a certain road and escape from the traffic jam. Ha ha ha, right. Oh no, I've just gone down a dead end. Oh no, I haven't. It's all good. Um... <clears throat> Sorry, I've just a little bit of um, danger and navigation. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we have all these tools, we have these constructs, we have evil means, we have fantastic, beautiful, good means which we can use these tools to share and extend the lives and make the lives more beautiful for everyone else and expand on the ideas without these tools um i would have just been walking around with a couple of crazy thoughts in my head and maybe i would have shared a, a few things to a few people and then got a funny look and then i would have just kept it to myself and um suppressed the ideas forevermore that nobody else would ever know them ever, and forevermore. So and when I say ideas, there's not very many ideas. Everything's an idea which I've had from something else. But um, this um, once I, once that mind is closed off, then it would have been a, a horrible thing to be in. So you you got to enjoy. You got to celebrate these tools. Um, what are oh, what was 
one guy. Um, do you remember the uh, the Unabomber who who was totally against any kind of technology advancement, and he 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 was uh, he thought it was going to be the um, end of humankind with um, us creating artificial intelligence, and the artificial intelligence would be basically. Um, Skynet and destroy us, and um, that'll be the demise. But the uh, I don't think that's going to happen. So, oh, this is uh, another subject in itself. Um, so, yeah, this Unabomber man tried to bring us back down to. Day zero and that that sort of reminds me of another man named Pol Pot who didn't like intelligent people or people that even wore glasses and decided to um to execute them at at great lengths. So you gotta be always wary of the people that dislike the tools. Um and oh yeah, so now that we're at the age of information um, and the ability to, for us to share the inf uh, information, so the age of information, we have gone through this tool knowledge sharing explosion, um, which is immense and scary at the same time, and governments do not know how to control it. In fact, it is pretty much impossible to control the ideas expansion of what is going on once they had this powerful medium during the during the second world war people would go down to the cinema to just get the news broadcast which um was um heavily propagandized and manipulated to ensure that the people wouldn't go into a panic um and that still goes on till this day but um the um, the information expansion is a very sort of interesting subject, and it's probably a whole new rant for me. Um, but in the in the sense of these tools, these tools have never exploded like ever before. Um, we're creating tools that, are like a again, the exponential rise of the of the tools, of which um, the virtual realm has has only been scratched on and is going to revolutionize everything that we see and do and the the idea of the tool is going to be pushed to the realms of whatever possibility that it could ever be used for um do we questions again to ask is that are we <laughs> a couple of little questions before I go on the on the tool subject. If we just expand it on a couple of things, are we just a tool of something else, which is um, a bit of a a mind uh, game for you? And you can just uh, push that with a little bit of uh, questioning to your own mind. And or do we become a tool, um, a tool of something else? Um, so. I just wanted to just put those ideas out there. If you can come back to me on any of those parts, um, it'll be very interesting. Um, uh, tools, very frustrating at the same time. Tools um, never seem to work how how you want them to work. Sometimes, <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, hope you don't mind listening to this tool, but. Um, it's been a pleasure as always, and I hope um, we will um, meet again um, 